How you doing, everybody? Uh, let me check. First of all, can you hear me okay? And uh, sound and video okay? Hi, Joseph. Just checking the sound and... Uh, hey, John. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, let me tell you what I wanted to talk about uh, this afternoon. We had... Um, uh, first of all, we're in the middle of what's called a snow squall. And a snow squall, sometimes it's just like being inside of a, a snow globe. And just there's snow swirling around like mad. And suddenly it, it, it like it turned more into a blizzard. And the wind is going and there's snow everywhere. And so <laughs> if I disappear... It probably means that some big limb or something fell on a wire or knocked the sound out. But uh, otherwise, seems to seem uh, blah, 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 blah. seems to be going okay right now. Hey, Junior, how you doing? Hater, how are you? Thomas, good to see you. Um. Uh, anyway, uh, this is what I want to talk about uh, t today. Is sort of a trying to really understand you know when we see a dial i was you know grumbling this morning about well you know i hear these kids they say oh well gee it's just uh must be an homage because it looks something like something else and um <laughs> how they see a, a a movement in in a and they say oh that's like a 64 uh gosh what is it, 68, 94, six, something like that, 64, 97, 98, because that's the only one they know. And what I thought would be worthwhile doing is taking a look at some of the uh, major, oh, I guess you'd call them movements in design and art and so forth. And so I, I tried to put together a number of things. And let me see if the thing I can, yeah. This is what I found to begin with. Uh, I saw this. I don't know how well you can see it. And, and it's a, it uh, probably turns in backwards. But here's a, a pocket watch. And they, they had these two fonts. Now, what this was from, somebody liked the fonts on the pocket watch and was going to use the fonts for something else, some other kind of design work that they were doing. And it, the... The watch looks like something probably from the 19th century would be my guess. But look at the how interesting the fonts are. I mean, they're they're um, they're not dull kind of Bauhaus. Uh, well, when I say dull, that's only dull dull in a certain context. But I thought by taking a look at some fonts, uh, and the one I thought would start with is the Art Nouveau. Art Nouveau was sort of from, I don't know, 1880s to sometime in the early um, 1900s. I don't know the exact date. Uh, I, I was looking, I had these books on on uh, sort of periods of different designs. Uh, this guy that I knew, uh, he and I did a book together a long time ago. And um, he used to make uh, the fonts for movies and stuff. Really interesting guy. and. Um, the the thing about art and fonts and everything else they reflect a lot of what's going on elsewhere in society and depending on what society you're in uh this is one of the more interesting ones i found this is uh, art nouveau and art nouveau is was much more of a feminine uh kind of art with a lot of of curves and so forth in it and that after that came a very industrial, almost kind of very geometrical kind of art called Art Deco. And so you'll see a lot of both of these uh, early on. Uh, this one is from a 1925 uh, French poster. And here you can see the, the this is very thick it looks i mean these everything here it looks it reminds me far more of the german poster art that they had during this time and this is a grand prix race in 1925 
And this is a poster for um, the Grand Prix, the um, uh, uh, Monaco Grand Prix, uh, Monte Carlo Grand Prix. And the if you look at the fonts, look how different the fonts are in terms of how there are these big, fat, solid, heavy fonts uh, versus Art Nouveau, which is very light and so forth. And the, the fonts and the, the styles and so on and so forth we get from different periods. Now, this morning, we took a look at a couple different um, dials with the uh, Roman numerals on them. And those dials were, you know, pretty much standard for the way uh, Roman numerals are used and so on and so forth. But when we, when we look at something, we shouldn't look at it, at least the watch design, even though I know a lot of you are going to say, and you're absolutely right, that, oh, so-and-so is, a, you know, ripped off somebody else. Okay, they did. Um, whoever they are but they also could be seen as sort of picking flowers from the same garden uh and and that's when you say okay well what about something really unique and individual and one of the one of the most interesting things was for the hermes hermes this like slim de hermes this watch and this font was totally uh, done. Uh, Hermes hired this. Uh, I, I guess he's a he's a designer, and he designed this font that was used with the uh, Hermes watch. And so it's like if 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 you see a watch like this and it has this font, there's a lawsuit <laughs> that's going to follow it up because it's so unique. And and most people designing watches i don't think there's there's a you know a lot of people who say well you know i'll stand in line to get a slim there or mess uh or a watch with a font like that but it reflects a different kind of creativity to tell you the truth than most of the watch dials that we see most of them are pretty much the same in certain respects so that's what i want and, and it's sort of trying to find the art that they came from. And a lot of times, too, is that somebody says, well, they're very practical fonts. And uh, a Bauhaus, especially, uh, uh, the ones that Nomos uses. No, Nomos is known almost for, for being Bauhaus in the sense that it's all very functional. But even in the functionality, you find you find a certain style of functionality. I should put it that way. Okay. Hey, Steve, how you doing? <laughs> hey, yeah, Junior, how are you? Quarters eye, good to see you. Velvia man, how are you? Uh, Forbin, hi, Forbin. Uh, I have those fonts on a 1900 Seth Thomas uh, mantle clock. Yeah, uh, Forbin, I'm glad you brought that up because this is another place that these come to I mean, and so you have a somebody designing a watch says, "Well, we're going to go get the fonts," and <laughs> he'll run off. To, and looking at clocks is a perfectly good way. Uh, this watch, one of my favorite, and one of the more unique in terms of design. Um, there it is. Uh, this is the um, uh, Van Cleef and Arpels RDC Ur Dair, which means uh, time here and time elsewhere. And the way it's designed is uh, here they have a retrograde minute. They have uh, two windows for jumping hours. You know? And then look at the, the, the font for the, uh, for the numbers is like, you know, it looks like something out of a, a telephone book. They're very, they're very functional. But then here you have, have this done in script. And then beh behind it, you have this Van Cleef type of, oh, I don't want to call it a logo, but it's sort of their style that they have in there. And this, this is why, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, something was from a style house. It's uh, actually, they can bring a lot to the uh, uh, two, uh, two watches. Hi, Jonathan, what's up? Um, there was a company from 
August Fiedler, I don't know if he is anyway related to the Fiedler dial uh, company of today that made most of the posters for watches back in the day. Yes, that would be a very fun thing to check out, hater. I didn't know that. Nomos is uh, Greek for no serifs. <laughs> oh, yeah, Nomos is for uh, sans serif. Hey, Cordero, Hermes uh, make very interesting and distinct dials. Yeah, you know, they, they do. And here you have something, I guess, in its own way. This is very Bauhaus in the, in the sense that it's uh, very functional and minimalist. You know, another thing, a really interesting thing, that I that I ran across was the um, what is it the Submariner the Rolex Submariner the the wheel that's used for the date they have this really interesting flathead four <laughs> you know they they have a four with a flat head on it and I think that's in in part so it can get on the wheel for the dates and so forth and but that I mean is even something as small as that, you have you have to deal with two things. You can't have just functional. You have to have functional within the context of a certain style. Um, and so that that's another kind of thing that's sort of fun to look at. Um, hey, Mr. Gumby, how you doing? Uh, Joseph, interesting. Some of the most bold and creative dial designs are more often found in the very inexpensive wristwatches. You know, that's true. I've noticed the same thing. They've got, um, maybe it's because if people are going to spend a lot of money, they, they want to see something that they feel safer with. I don't know, but that's a good point, Joseph. Uh, John, let's see. Uh, so many fonts were available through Letraset. These were the basis for, for future watches and old. You ought to see them now. You know, the thing I think, John, that really uh, blew up the the available fonts was adobe you know back in the day uh you know when we went from i guess dot matrix printers to uh daisy wheel printers which were sort of like an ibm typewriter almost uh and then they went to laser and totally different just totally unleashed this whole world of fonts that uh, we really didn't have available to us until the laser came along. At least this is to the average Joe. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Got your got your new watch on, I hope. You know, by the way, Mark, that reminds me. I was I was looking at the uh, some write ups that they had on the designs of F. P. Jorns. And the thing about F. P. Jorns is that their <laughs> their fonts. I think are are very much theirs. In other words, they designed them from scratch, and along with the way they way they have their their watches. This is another thing that that's sort of interesting about. I've seen a lot of watches like this. Uh, I don't know if this looks backwards to you. It does to me. But you know, here you have a twelve. The top of it is up on the uh, on the edge here, and then um, the one, and then the two and three. And then it flips over. Uh, the four, the the bottom of the of the font is on the rail, uh, and I was surprised to see that, but very glad because you know when you stop and look at it, sort of the bottom half, the the uh, uh, tail of the font is on the is on the rim, whereas at the you know above three and nine o'clock, it's all on the um, it's all on the top, and both the three and the nine have their the top of theirs on it. And that is, I think, a, a matter that's sort of a functional, interesting thing put together. Uh, the way F.P. Jorn does it, he just has them all on the same direction. And that same is true that you find with, um, you find the same thing. So here's what we were looking at this morning. You find the same thing with uh, virtually all dials using uh, Roman numerals. The Roman numerals are always after three o'clock or four. Uh, I got it backwards. Okay. After three o'clock going down, um, they're all upside down because they don't change orientation. And, you know, some of these things, it, it's sort of like, like I said, I was grumbling about Omaha. People say, oh, it's Omaha's. Um, 
when it's not, it's sometimes it is, but I'm saying, or even a ripoff. Um, anyway, um, that I thought was, it's sort of fun to sort of like to follow the origins. And a lot of the origins that I found out this morning went to places I didn't expect. Some went to the pocket watches, which I did expect. Others, like this, went to a contemporary designer. Other really fat ones went back to uh, sort of a very thick uh, portion of Art Deco. Because I mean, Art Deco has some of the skinniest little line fonts. And then they have these big sort of thudding fonts. Um, I like numerals uh, where they go upside down at the bottom, nine to six. Uh, yeah, well, I tell you, if you have an FP journal, you better. <laughs> or if you like them for Roman numerals, yeah. I, you know, in fact, when I started looking at a lot of these, I was surprised to see how many the the directions of how they did it. This is a uh, this particular font and the use of it is that what they do is that they all have them sort of they're they're all right side up um on like this one here well everything but the uh here they're all right side up and so that nobody gets flipped and they all have at the bottom but they have to angle them at different angles uh, this was done on both the Pedic philippe and on the vacheron constantin using those uh, big thick fonts and so i think that's another another sort of interesting thing i think about about the design is when they have um when they have to do something that, to decide well what am i going to do with the font i wonder why they always almost always have the roman numerals uh upside down like that oh yeah hater that's another thing this is something else that's unusual uh the four rather than having a uh, one V for the four, they have one, two, three, four, four sticks. I don't know why. Hi, Sean. Um, watchmakers four. Okay. Oh, is that what it's called? That's that's a neat name for it. It. I think the reason is is that if they line up four sticks, it's. Let me see if I can do this. It doesn't take up as much room as a V and a one. That, that's my guess. Uh, one can imagine the complexity of hand applied indexes in the old days before CAD CAM uh, patience was essential. Yeah. I. <laughs> one of the other fonts that came up there is looking at, uh, by the way, too, if, if you're not familiar with a website that it, it's actually, I guess it's sort of a, a person who sells um, independent uh, watches by independence called the collected man. Not only do you, does he have the, uh, you know, just the stuff for sale. Most of it is like it's already been sold. Uh, but he also has some good articles about different things and so forth. And I, and I was reading one of the articles he had, on, on the designs of different watches and where they came from and some of the interesting things that they did. Uh, Roger Dubuis dials are among the most bold and creative in high horology. Uh, they have taken Roman numerals to another level. Now, Joseph, uh, are these, uh, when you talk about Roger Dubuis, oh, wait a minute, hang on a second. I think I know what you're talking about, Roger. And I think you're right too. Okay, yeah. Whoop. They have used they have they have two kinds of, of watches that they use that on what um uh, what Joseph is talking about. Uh one is called the Excalibur and others this I this is a um actually it doesn't look like it, but it's it's a sympathy, uh, a version of the sympathy, and I think that they later on use that for um ended up calling it the Excalibur but if you I had to look at this for a long time before I realized that uh the Roman numerals extended beyond this 
uh, let me see, I can't even get to it. There's this inner ring here, and the Roman numerals extended beyond that. I don't know if that's what you're talking about um, or not, but it's, to me, it was really an interesting feature of it. H Hater, that's, uh, you're probably right about that, Hater. I was just guessing. Um, uh, oh, and you see, I have a lantern Viennese wall clock from 1840 with a watchmaker's four and a Roman numerals orientation or upside down from four to eight. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These forms are around for a long time. I, I, I think you're right. I, I, I wonder, you know, as a sort of, as a style that isn't it's not so much perhaps one copying somebody else but it's sort of like a practical solution to uh to something for some reason i mean you, you have to pretty much know uh what you're looking at here i mean it doesn't i i, I tend to orient myself on an analog watch by the positions of the the markings for the numbers because uh, this certainly doesn't seem that way. Uh, when I saw a, a guy had a watch something like this by Dubuis called the um, Sympathy. I, I'm sorry, but uh, called it the Excalibur. And the Excalibur, I looked at that thing and I just looked like sort of these funny lines all over the place. And then, but then I finally realized that they were the Roman numerals. And look, and so when I got this watch, it's the same thing. And here and sure enough, here at uh, four o'clock, there they are. One, two, three, four. Okay. Um, what do you think of the California dials? Uh, the best of both fonts. You know, I like California dials, and I don't know why. I really don't. I mean, there, there's something about them I like. Maybe because that was my, my origins are in California of a third or fourth generation Californian. And um, and the story behind it, I think, is really interesting, the fact that they call them that. But, you know, I, they really originated before they became California fonts. They were one of the font sets on the dial that was used on Rolexes. Uh, some of the older Rolexes I, I found had those on them already. Now, maybe what I was looking at was some that had been redialed that way, but I don't I don't know. Um, Vel Velvia man, the four is to balance the eight in Roman numerals. That that probably sounds more like it. Um, <laughs> Velvia, you're sitting next to. How come I don't have a wall clock? What I'm looking at my wall clock. I have a wall clock of the um, uh, FP Jorn. CS Chronomet Surveying that is is it's has a sort of a silver outside like but the one I have is uh the same color and you know I look at you know the ones from they're all upside down from uh three down to, to back to nine again and I look at it and the six on the bottom upside down it looks exactly like a nine I've never found that a problem, though, and I don't know why. I look at the nine doesn't go there. The nine goes over to the side. And so I think a, a lot of the looking at the watch isn't so much the actual number they have, but rather the position of it is in, in a watch. This one I can't do that with <laughs> because it's got, it has this sort of, I would say, about a, third of the watch is taken up by this retrograde minutes and then uh here and here are the jumping hours and then here is this french that i have a very difficult time pronouncing a practical solution is a perfect way to describe it it was uh nature they call it independent evolution ah okay uh they could do like a a pool ball and put a line under it. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a good, I don't know. You guys ever play eight ball. You have a, 
a six and a nine. A six has a line underneath the, the loop at the bottom, and the nine has a stick underneath the uh, nine. Uh, today's market, the wall clock is going for over 20,000. <laughs> the wall clock is going over for 20,000. It's a, it's a quartz clock for, I'm surprised they even have them. Um, if a pool cook can't remember for some odd reason. <laughs> okay. The cue ball is, a, is a mystery one. All, all right. It, if we were going to describe some typical dials um i don't i i think the ones that would come to mind with me there there seem to be two pilot watches the flieger style uh which is sort of comes from a, another kind of practicality uh along with design you want to be able to see what time it is uh, and the other one is this old-fashioned one uh, with the with the big uh, fonts and so forth that, you know, for the old uh, uh, Zenith pilot, the uh, Paddock Philippe pilot, those have those those big clunky numbers. And now the, um, the Heritage uh, H. Moser have them too. And so I, you know, but they're... I just assume that they all come from the same place, but I, I could be wrong. And I'm trying to think, you know, when I saw these uh, these this heavy font uh, from sort of the Art Deco era, and then these things, uh, the Roman numerals on it are all outlined, uh, which gives it another, you know, which adds weight to the font. Um, thinking, well, maybe that was maybe that's what it was was some early uh, kind of art uh, deco, but they look more, they look actually more sort of a heavy type of art nouveau. Unlike a string of numbers, a dial uh, has a position. So once you be able to tell the six from the nine, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I think with a, with an analog watch or clock, uh, those are the, those are the things that you can, you can just glance at. I've got, you know, one of those dumb clocks with a cat with a tail wagging back and forth and the eyes going like this. I got one of those up there that I, I really like that. And and the numbers on those, uh they have they're all straight up and you know nothing, you know, but it's fun. Um I've seen California dials and pictures of a few early Rolexes in James Dowling's book, The Best of Time. Ah, so yeah, I, I think Thomas, I think one of the reasons that the California dials were so called, uh, people had, you know, after World War II, they had their old, they had some old Rolexes that were sort of beat up. And so they'd take them in to have them redialed. And uh, so some of those could have had the California, uh, what they call California dials. Now, they call them California dials because the place that did it was in Southern California. So it was. How about the font of the old Tissot banana tank type, elongated font, a bit of Art Nouveau. Yeah, yeah. There, you know, there's this. this you know, can be great fun on that. Here, this watch, um, this Philippe Dubois. Uh, this one, the dials on this. I mean, when you look at the the dial, it's sort of like uh, sort of a old-fashioned looking dial with the indent on the sides and it looked like you know something from uh you know the early half of the 20th century but the numbers are just about as you know, <laughs> boring as you not boring but they're just sort of straight up uh sans serif fonts very practical uh i have I have that clock. Oh, the black cat clock. Yeah, TikTok clock. I, I forget what to call it. Like a regulator wall clock. <laughs> yeah. Well, mine mine just has, doesn't have a second hand, just hour and minute hand. And after I put a new battery and all the tail and the eyes and everything work, but after, that doesn't last long. Uh, and then from then on, it's just a quartz watch working on it. Um.
<laughs> hour, minute, and tail. Yeah, I guess the tail <laughs> going back and forth. It it sort of looks. It could look like a pendulum, but it's it's not. I've got uh, when we were in Germany a few years ago, uh, we got a real cuckoo clock. My wife loves cuckoo clocks. Some people have said, "Yeah, I was looking, I was watching one of your videos, and I heard this cuckoo clock." <laughs> you heard three of them, uh, and my wife has them going off at different times so that she can see the different shows that they have. I tell you, well made. But we got a real German cuckoo clock, and the way instead of using a, a mainspring, they have the weights that go down. Really, very cool. Uh, we're still working to set it up. <laughs> They're not. Yeah, with a bow tie. <laughs> what I found out with those, uh, tick, what do they call it? Kit Kat, Tick Cat, or something like that, uh, clocks, they have, um, at least mine, the eyes and the tail. They don't last long. Even when I put a when I put a brand new battery in, everything works great. Uh, but then I just uh, I don't want to keep putting new batteries in it. <laughs> uh, okay, the Acorn weights. Yep, that's what. Uh, yeah, that's what I've got. Yeah, we, we got one. Uh, we got one in Nuremberg. They were great. This little store had this big clock. I forgot it was. Um, it was not cheap, but it was. They had a they they'd ship it for us, and uh, I guess there's some I don't know some kind of paperwork so we didn't have to pay the VAT on it so it was a pretty good deal. Okay, um, so what are some what are some other distinctive designs that can be used by different watches without the the accusation of ripoff or homage or something like that? Ah, Velvia man. Okay. Sector dials. It's another good one. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Velvia man. I don't know why it sounds like so 1984. Like we have them imprinted on their brain. <laughs> but you're right. Okay. Uh, oh my goodness, I'm out of time. Uh, sorry, guys. Um, no indices. Oh yeah, Joseph, that's a great example. Wonderful example. Uh, Moser concept watches. You can look at a Moser concept watch. It's got. You know, maybe they'll quit putting hands on it. Even then, you could really have to know what it is. Yeah, you're right. Um, you're exactly right about that. And you, if they wouldn't work, this, this would not work with a concept now because you'd have a thing going over here with, you, know, you sort of, after a while though, I found out that you sort of get an idea, uh, where everything is because you just get used to it on, on the analog part. Okay. Do you think that the Breguet font will remain a classic font until the end of time? Or fashion change. You know, Thomas, um, here's the only thing that's going to stop um, like this. My watch has the uh, Breguet uh, numbers on it. I, You know, it, it's such a popular font, and everybody likes it as far as I know. And it's, you know, sort of a classic font and classy and everything else. I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I guess... You know, people get tired of anything, uh, but I think that I don't think that font and you look at sort of some of these other heritage fonts. Um, I think the same thing is true of them. Um, a, a red gold endeavor um, with a light blue foam concept dial. Yeah, I don't blame that. Those are great. Um yeah, prime pan or a dial <laughs> coincidence? I don't think so. You're right. I gotta go now, guys. Uh, thank you for putting up with me, <laughs> and thanks for thanks for joining us. Take care, and till next time. <laughs>